When proud New Yorker Rosie Perez moved to California, she had no intention of becoming famous. But she nevertheless went on to establish herself as a successful actress, choreographer, and TV personality, which is quite remarkable considering the odds she was up against. This is her tragic real-life story. In her 2014 memoir, Handbook for an Unpredictable Life, Perez revealed that her mother Lydia briefly left her longtime husband for another man when she fell pregnant with his child. They moved into a Brooklyn apartment together, but things were over before Perez was even born. As her dad jumped out of the window when her mom allegedly pulled a gun on him and didn't look back, Perez's mom returned to her husband just before she was born. But there wasn't a place for young Rosie. Fortunately, her Aunt Tia was happy to have her. She took her in when Rosie was still an infant, and the future actress spent the first three years of her life believing that her aunt was her mother. The arrangement worked for everyone, until Lydia showed up out of the blue and demanded that the child be turned over to her. With no legal right to keep hold of her, Tia reluctantly let her go. And then within a few days, Lydia did the same thing, abandoning Rosie at a Catholic children's home in Westchester County. In an interview with Al Jazeera America, Perez admitted, "...from the day I could remember her, I felt rejected by her." Being ripped away from her loving aunt was traumatic enough for three-year-old Rosie Perez, but thanks to some abusive nuns, living at St. Joseph's Catholic home for children wasn't much better. Not all the staff members were violent, but a few managed to make Perez's life hell. As the actress told Al Jazeera America, "...there were certain people that were supposed to be taking care of me that were hurting me. But as a child, everything was very clear to me. It was confusing at first. Who's my mother? Who's my aunt? Why am I here? Who are these people with the funny scarves on their heads? The worst perpetrator was a nun named Sister Renata. Perez went so far as to call her evil incarnate in her memoir, as she went into detail about a disturbing incident that allegedly took place when she was just six years old. After Perez was caught giggling, Sister Renata ordered her to stand face up against a metal locker for an hour. The nun kept watch, and when Perez's eyes started to close, Sister Renata banged her head into the locker. This wasn't an isolated incident, as Perez claims that Renata also used to regularly backhand her across the face. Despite the abuse, there were some hints of Perez's future success during her time at the home. Even in, in the home, the nuns always picked me as the lead mm -hmm. uh, in their holiday productions. When Perez was eight years old, she got the chance to join her half-siblings at a group home upstate, which allowed her to finally enroll in the regular school system. The move was good for her, but her visits home to see her mother were anything but. Her siblings informed her that their mom was schizophrenic. All Perez really knew was that she would sometimes get punched for no apparent reason. Her mother also hadn't lost her love of firearms. On one home visit, she walked her daughter into a convenience store with a concealed gun and forced her to shoplift. Even though her mom treated her horribly, the rejection still hurt. As the actress told Al Jazeera America, "...that's the crazy dynamics that exist with the abuser and the person being abused, especially a child and their parent. You want your parent to love you. You want your parent to want you. Then after a while, after they beat you down so much, you want them even more." Luckily for Perez, the welfare system gave her the support that she needed to succeed, something she's eternally grateful for. As she told Al Jazeera America, "...certain policies allowed me to better myself because I wanted better, and I knew I was better." The group home was a huge improvement for Perez, but it was still a dangerous place for a young girl to be. Instead of an abusive nun, there was a sketchy counselor who was later dismissed after an assault allegation was made against him. He once allegedly cornered Perez's half-sister and would have likely assaulted her had Perez not been there to intervene. Sadly, though, nobody was there to help Perez when she was subjected to assault herself in the one place that she should have been able to feel safe, her mother's home. To make matters even worse, the perpetrator was another family member. As Perez revealed in her memoir, on two separate occasions during her childhood, her half-brother assaulted her. The alleged attacks took place when she was home visiting her mother, who reacted violently after her daughter told her what had happened. She was beaten and branded a liar by her mom, and her brother was never prosecuted for his crimes. According to Perez, all of her siblings were victims, and helping them break the cycle of abuse was the most important thing to accomplish. What were you like as little Rosie? I was complicated. In what way? <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I you know, I didn't I had a bittersweet childhood. 
When Perez left her group home when she was 14, she moved back in with her aunt Tia. She was happy to finally be back, even if there wasn't much cash to go around. As she described the situation to CNN, Once, when work was slow and money was tight, my aunt cut up some Slim Jims. She worked at the factory in Brooklyn and put it in the rice as meat for dinner. We looked at each other and I could tell she was embarrassed, but just then she said, hee hee hee, and we started laughing so hard. Aunt Tia enrolled Perez at Grover Cleveland High School in Queens, where trouble found her once again. She was involved in regular schoolyard altercations, but none of it faced her until another student decided one day to pull a razor on her and threatened to cut out her dimples. That was the final straw for Perez, who decided it was time to put New York City in her rearview mirror and start over fresh in California. Uh, I was a sweet girl. It's just if you pissed me off, you'd see the other side. <laughs> The very first time that Rosie Perez traveled abroad, she experienced racial profiling. Authorities at London's Heathrow Airport subjected her to a full-body search because they assumed that she was a drug mule. Sadly, things weren't much better when she returned to America, as she discovered that respectable acting roles were rather hard to come by for a woman of color. As she told People magazine in 2018, When I first started in this industry, they didn't want diversity. They wanted me to be completely whitewashed. I've never shied away from portraying my Puerto Rican-ness. In her memoir, Perez revealed that she almost didn't get to play what's arguably her most iconic role in 1992's White Men Can't Jump, because producers were nervous about her ethnicity. They were also also concerned about the interracial aspect of her relationship with Woody Harrelson's character. Harrelson wasn't having any of it though as he clicked with Perez during her audition and he stood his ground against the bigwigs. The rest is history, but that kind of discrimination is still rampant in Hollywood, according to Perez. As she told People, I think it's really, really important for Latin actors and actresses to go out for roles that are not specifically designed for a Latino character. Let them know that we're not just one thing, we're human beings first and Latinos second. Considering all the hardships that Perez endured in childhood, it shouldn't be too surprising to learn that she's been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. She spent years believing that she'd gotten over everything that happened to her. But when she finally plucked up the courage to talk to someone, she realized the burden she was still carrying. In 2014, she told Time magazine, Initially, it wasn't a relief. It was kind of like, oh my goodness, I'm human. I didn't have that much control over my emotional response, the way I thought I did. And then there was this big sigh, and it was like a weight was lifted off of me. Perez didn't decide to talk to a professional about her traumatic past until well into her adulthood, partly because of the stigma associated with mental health where she grew up. In 2014, she told CNN, I've heard racist remarks that refer to getting psychotherapy help as being white. Therapy is not a white thing, it's a clinical thing. Perez is one of the many actresses who've spoken out against disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein, who was sentenced to 23 years in prison in March 2020, after being found guilty of two charges related to assault. In January of that year, Perez testified that fellow actress Annabella Sciorra told her that Weinstein had assaulted her. Perez claimed that Sciorra made the confession back in the mid-90s, but she was sworn to secrecy by her terrified friend. Shiora initially refused to identify her attacker. A few months later, though, Perez heard a rumor that Weinstein had been harassing Shiora in London, and the penny dropped. She called her friend, and her fears were confirmed. Both women broke down in tears at this point. Perez said that she then begged Shiora to go to the police, but she replied, I can't. He'd destroy me. Rosie Perez has never enjoyed flying, but she decided to get over that fear for the HBO Max series, The Flight Attendant, because star Kaylee Cuoco really wanted her on board. Production on the show was temporarily shut down due to COVID-19, a disease that Perez was very familiar with. In fact, she contracted the novel coronavirus while traveling to Thailand to shoot the show in 2019. As she explained to Uproxx, at that time, they were saying it's a new respiratory tract infection. It's a virus that's going around. We don't really know what it is and what it does, but it attacks the respiratory system first and then travels to other parts of your body. What happened next left Perez terrified. As she recalled, I remember my manager was with me and I said, Tarek, don't let me die in Bangkok. And he goes, oh my God, you're scaring me. And the head of the ICU says, you should be scared, sir. This is serious. We're going to have to put her in a separate room. So Perez found herself isolated in a foreign country as the virus made its way through her. She suffered from a fever, a cough, aches, and fatigue, with the whole experience leaving her scared that she might die. I remember seeing 
I'm just my husband and my sister and my father who's deceased. And I said, oh my God, don't let me die in Bangkok. Against all the odds, Rosie Perez became a successful Oscar-nominated actress, and now she's using her platform to encourage people to open up about their own mental health struggles, especially people of color. She's seen too many people shun the help that they need out of a misplaced sense of pride, and she wants to put an end to it. As she told the New York Amsterdam News in 2014, as people of color, sometimes we don't get the mental help we need. We might go to a church or something, but that's not enough. I was hit in the head repeatedly, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But I understood my spirit, and I honored my spirit. I understood that I was special. I wanted to be the best me I could be, so I went and got help. Perez believes that if speaking to somebody worked for her, then it can work for anyone. But finding the right person to talk to is absolutely essential. She tried a few different professionals before she settled on one who understood her wants and needs. As she told Shondaland.com in 2020, a friend introduced me to a psychoanalyst and we clicked. She didn't let me get away with things. She said, if you're not going to be truthful, this isn't going to work. After years of struggles, Perez was finally able to take control of her demons, and she sounds happier than ever. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.